All right, the next thing we're going to look at today is the nonlinear spring system. So what we're looking at before is the linear spring system where force is equal to k over k times x. So the, the, it's like a linear system as the x increases, the force also increases linearly. Right now, we're going to look at a system with nonlinear spring system. where force is equal to kx squared was in a quadratic equation. So let's just say, for instance, it goes like this. As x increases, the force increases by double. So let's write the equation. So the same, uh, uh, the previous uh, diagram, the same diagram, so I have mass 1 and so there should be a spring k1 k2 and mass 2 all I'm trying to figure out is q1 and q2 the displacement q1 and q2 what are they so let's just rewrite this equation in terms of x so So f is equal to k x squared. So x is equal to f forward k and take a root of it. So that will give me the x. Now let's talk about energy. So everyone know energy. For example, I'm gonna say potential energy mg. H or half mv squared. So let's okay. Let's take a half mv squared. That's simple. So let's forget about half for now. So I have an mv squared. So masses is it in units? It's like m. Velocity is speed over meters over second. So l over t squared. So I'm just going to rewrite everything, m l squared t minus 2. So let's take the potential energy, mgh is equal to mass, acceleration, so it's l over t squared, so acceleration is meters per second squared, then height is equal to l, so I'm rewriting it as m l squared t minus squared. So let's think about energy. So the cool thing about energy is, from the right energy is force time distance. You might ask why, how is it possible? So let's write force is equal to force is equal to m times a times d. It's similar to mgh. You have a mass, you have acceleration, you have your heavier acceleration due to gravity. And if you have a distance in meters, and you have a distance in height. So it's the same thing, force time. It's also energy. So force time distance also an energy. So I'm going to write everything, this energy force in, in the sum of the both of the mass, the force in the both of the masses. So we can call it like a complementary strain energy of system. We're going to call this a C, a complementary. So let's write for the first one. So I have force times D. That's energy. We're going to derive this equation or integrate this equation in terms of. So we're not deriving anything, sorry. We're integrating this inter equation in terms of force because that's what's changing. So. Let's write that D. So in here, for the first one, D is equal to F1 over K1. So
this okay let's want to do f over k to the power of 0.5 so the same thing root of 5 0.5 is also as you can do so rooting it so f1 k1 to the power of 5 and df1 we're going to draw this equation in terms of df or f so the first one is from 0 to f1 and for the second one is f2 over k2 to the power of 0.5 and we're going to derive it in terms of df from 0 to f2 I'm going to read out everything on another page so c is equal to 0 to f1 f1 k1 to the power of 0.5 df plus 0 to f2 f2 over k2 to the power of 5 df now let's do a simple integration so let's just forget about all these f1 k1 blah 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 we know k1 and k2 are constant that's number one number two let's do a simple integration from let's say x to the power of half or 0.5 If I integrate x to the power of 0.5, what I essentially I have to do is like add a 1, so x 1 plus 1 half, that one will give me 3 over 2, then take this value and flip it. So 3 over 2, so up 3 is going to go down, 2 is going to go up. So what's the result is x to the power of 3 over 2 times 2 over 3 so that's a simple integration so we're going to apply the same logic in here so c is equal to k is a constant so let's take it out I'm going to put 1 half 0.5 or same thing then integrate f1 so it's going to give me 2 over 3 f1 3 over 2 plus Again in here, same thing, k1 over k2 half times 2 over 3 f2 3 over 2. So that's the equation we have for the forces. Now, from the last equation, oh, let's recombine everything, so 2 over 3 times f1 3 over 2 k1 1 over 2 then 2 over 3 times f2 3 over 2 times k2 1 over 2 now with v or uh, let's in a simple I have a k1 m1 M2, K, K1, K2, M2. So the reaction force on M2, or let's say F2, is equal to weight 2 only. But the reaction force on F1 is carrying out the sum of the mass of M1 and M2. So weight 1 plus weight 2. We're going to replace F1 and F2. The we're going to replace this F1 and F2 with these two uh, equations. So C is equal to 2 over 3. I'm going to take a general common value because it's common in, in both of the equations. So F1 is equal to weight 1 plus weight 2, 3 over 2, then K1, 1 over 2, plus F2 is equal to weight 2. So weight 2, 3 over 2 k2 1 over 2 everything is goes inside the bracket if, if you remember from the last last time when we did the linear spring equation all to find the displacement all you have to do right now is take the derivative of c in terms of what are the masses you're looking for what are the displacement you're looking for if you're looking for displacement of q1 then take the derivative in terms of mass 1 if you're looking for the displacement of mass 2 
they'll take the derivative leap in terms of mass 2. So let me write the equation C2 is equal to 2 over 3 weight 1 plus weight 2 3 over 2 divided by K1 1 over 2 plus weight 2 3 over 2 divided by K2 1 over 2. So I'm looking for, let's say I'm looking for displacement Q1 so DC divided by D weight 1 is equal to, let's say, 2 over 3 straight outside. Now, I have weight 1 only in this equation. So, I want to derive this equation and the K1 over K2 is a constant. So let's put this outside. K1, 1 over 2. That's a constant. So in here, if I derive this, so 3 over 2 comes down, then, so let's write 1 over 1, 2. On top of the bracket, 3 over 2 minus, let's say, this is like 1.5 minus 1 is 0.5, so it's like 1 over 2. And I don't have V2 in here, so this will, so in here, this and this and this and this will cancel out. So it will give us weight 1 plus weight 2 divided by k1, everything to the power of half. So that is the displacement of q1 in a nonlinear system where f is equal to kx squared. For a displacement of k2 is dc over d omega 2. So 2 over 3 outside. It's a constant. Now for each term being a derivative. So the first term I have only I have a, a way two in here. So k one one and a half comes out. Then the power comes down three over two. Then three over two minus one is one half. So weight one plus weight two one half. Plus I have a way two in here as well. So three over two comes down. And also I have forgot about k2 one half, then v2 to the power of 3 over 2 minus 1 is going to be v2 to the power of 1. So v2 to the power of positive 0.5, or 1 half. So since these are in a bracket, so this all will cancel out. Because I'm multiplying each term. So this will turns out to be v1 plus v2 k1. 1 half plus v2 over k2 over 1 half. So, this, these two are the displacement of nonlinear system which has f is equal to kx squared uh, linear uh, response. And this is uh, the simplest way of using uh, energies to calculate the you know, the displacement rather than using kinematics as in like uh, v is equal to uh, v final is equal to v uh, initial plus a t or oh I haven't done this v final square plus v initial square minus 2 a s and I forgot the last one well you get the point so this is the simplest way to calculate the displacement of q1 and q2 using this energy method Thank you for watching and next time we will see some, uh, I'll see you guys with another cool math question I guess. Bye.